Let's get to the college students all across this great country who are staging a walkout. The campaign is calling for the United States to end their support of Israel and the war against Hamas killers. Many elite universities apparently are struggling. What do you do? How do you handle all the backlash? Harvard is preparing a task force to support protesting students. And Columbia University postponed a major fundraiser called Giving Day on campus because of all the turmoil. They're part of a long growing list and we have to scroll it quickly. We can't even slow it down really for you to read it because there's so many names of colleges and universities from across the country that have been protesting against Israel since the war began earlier this month. And when I say against Israel and they say pro-Palestine, Palestine is not a country that the United States recognizes as any type of unified state. It's a territory where Palestinians live. That's how we term it. And they elected, don't know if they did it by force, don't know, but they put into office Hamas terrorists. And so when you support the humanitarian crisis of people that are happening all over the world who are Arab, but particularly in that part of the world on Gaza, you're looking at a situation where they've been in a humanitarian crisis ever since Hamas took control. They don't build electrical grids. They don't feed their people. They can't turn on the water. That's why Israel does all of that. So when you support Hamas, you support killers. It is a conundrum for these universities. Does it have to be, though? Isn't it obvious? Alexis McAdams is in New York with more. Alexis. Harris, those questions you just asked to the viewers who are listening are the same questions that Jewish students are asking at campuses across the country, including here at NYU. Many say they don't feel safe walking around campus because of planned protests that are for pro-Palestinian people. So take a look here. This is a live look right now at Washington Square Park, where I am. It's going to be a campus walkout, one of dozens planned across the country. We're expecting to see hundreds of students show up here at the park after they leave class to quote, stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people. This is not the first protest that they've had here. And people, including who Fox and Friends talked to earlier, Harris, a young woman who's an American who survived that horrible attack by Hamas at that music festival in Israel, says these walkouts and these protests make her feel uncomfortable and unsafe. Watch. This is America. I, I'm an American citizen. How can, how can people just look away and, and justify the fact that my friends are, are captive. Their family members are captive. And we've seen student protests like here before at NYU. Students for Justice in Palestine and other groups at dozens of campuses encouraging students to head out of class and stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people, saying we need to divest from Israel's occupation and genocide of the Palestinian people in their Instagram posts they've been sharing. So pro-Israel counter protests are also expected in the coming days. Uh, from University of Chicago to Harvard University, college campuses have been the epicenter of these ongoing protests. And big donors are cutting ties with those schools, saying they are allowing anti-Semitic events on campus. At Columbia University, today's annual giving day was postponed, as you mentioned. That event usually pulls in big money last year, $30 million in 24 hours, but that's not happening today. So over at George Washington University, this just into our newsroom, new social media posts show these messages displayed on the outside of the library, Harris, at George Washington University. One message there reads, glory to our martyrs, and another projected in lights up there says, free Palestine from the river to the sea. So at Harvard University, the student paper says the school is launching a task force to support students that are being doxxed and harassed. But Harris, those are the students that signed on to a statement that says, they hold Israel entirely responsible for all the ongoing violence. So back out here live at Washington Square Park in New York City. We're expecting to see hundreds of those students show up here. So we'll keep a close eye on that and also these protests and walkouts across the country. Harris. Look, we, we've had uh, Nate Foy. We've had Lawrence Jones and you and many of our other journalists out at these protests. And I know that you get to talk to some of these people. Um, I, I'm just wondering, what are their answers to some of the questions I was asking? I mean, do they know who they really support? Do, do they believe it? Lawrence Jones mm -hmm. told me a story about a young man who didn't believe all the propaganda, as he called it. No, Jews weren't murdered in their beds. I mean, how is that even happening? They are on the Internet, we know. 
Yeah, they continue to say that they, you know, when you ask them a lot of these questions, they just say, well, we stand with the Palestinian people. And when you follow up, you know, they just kind of start chanting and shouting. So we haven't been able to get a lot of answers. We're hoping to uh, later this afternoon when we talk to them. But, um, you know, there's a lot of emotions run high at these things, and they stand by what they think, you know, is, is what's right. And that's why so many Jewish students, Harris, are saying, well, where's the university to step in? Because they think it's passing, you know, freedom of speech at this point. Alexis McAdams, thank you very much. A new piece co-written by Barry Weiss, highlighting the spread of anti-Semitism. Here's what she writes. Free press staffers arrived at work to find graffiti sprayed on their walls in their office building. The messages read, F Jews and F Israel. Well, they read more than that, but that's just what we can say and what we can print. She goes on to say a wave of anti-Semitic hate from physical violence to harassment has affected Jews across the globe. Jews have been intimidated and demeaned in American cities and on U.S. university campuses, as you just saw from Alexis's reporting, all happening in recent weeks. Republican Congressman Burgess Owens, along with more than 50 other Republicans, is moving to fight the hate. He introduced a resolution condemning support of Hamas by colleges that are doing that. Congressman Burgess Owens is in focus now, member of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and Education and Workforce Committee. Great to have you, Congressman. First of all, tell me about the journey that America is having right now with anti-Semitism. Well, Harris, um, this has been a journey we've been on for quite a while. It's been because we've been uh, indoctrinated by termites, ideological termites termite called Marxists. This has been going on for, for, for a long time. The reason why I've been so excited about being part of this solutions of education is we've seen uh, our, our country, our kids are coming out literally hating everyone. Uh, we've dealt with the last mm. couple of years of, of, of blacks hating whites, uh, having their own dormitories, uh, having their own graduations. Uh, this is an, an outgrowth. I had no idea how bad it was getting until we now see how heartless our kids are. I understand, I, I grew up in a generation, my dad came back from World War II. Uh, and not only did they go out and fight evil, they came back and built a remarkable middle class and then went out and helped those, uh, those countries that used to be our, our enemies to become our friends. Their heart was all about helping, delivering service. We have a, a group of, of kids coming out today that have no heart. They, 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 they deny evil, they, they applaud evil. That is not the American way. So it comes down to us is we have to make sure that the outcomes are much better than they have been. We have to hold these colleges accountable. If they cannot give us a good product, those who love our country, love others, go out there and produce. We need to make sure we're pulling back funds. Uh, it's, it, it is a great time in our country that we finally understand the curve has been pulled back. And we now see that, that within our own nation, we are developing enemies to our own nation. And we cannot allow that to happen to our, to our good kids who have so much great potential, but they are being indoctrinated by these Marxists in these colleges, these, particularly uh, Ivy League colleges. And I would, say, I would say this, I'm thankful finally that the very wealthy are getting it. They didn't get it the last few years with this Black Lives Matter mess. They're finally getting it and pulling their money back. And that's the one thing that, uh, that the, the left understands. Power and money is where they thrive. And if we pull up that money back, we'll pull back their power. Yeah, I, just real quickly, can you speak to the issue of just how confused the responses have been from some of these universities? I mean, Harvard, <laughs> I, I don't know who writes in their public relations department, but I mean, how hard is it to condemn on first ask Hamas killers? Well, if you've been raised in a, uh, a college that believes uh, everything that we stand against, everything we stand for, it's very difficult for them to nuance this. They, they go with their heart, they go with their feelings, they go with what they've been taught. We have been dealing with decades of this stuff. So those who are now in our, in our corporate structure, those now in our college uh, administrative, they have been trained for decades to do what they're doing mm -hmm. now. So it's very difficult for them. And that's why we have to make sure we're holding these colleges accountable. If we do mm -hmm. so, and based on their outcome, they will start finding the right kind of teachers, right kind of uh, uh, professors that will teach our kids how to succeed and not, not go the route they're going right now. Yeah, and I like what you say. Based on the outcome of their cash dwindling, look, there were, you know, upwards of 30 groups on that Harvard campus, and it, it just took some time for that, for that university to speak to those groups that were, you know, for Hamas. All yeah. right, let's move. House Republicans could vote on the latest choice for speaker just hours from now. Last night, they voted Mike Johnson, congressman from Louisiana, to be their fourth speaker candidate since Kevin McCarthy, congressman from California, had to vacate his seat. Congressman Tom Emmer dropped out just four hours after initially being voted in as the nominee 
yesterday. And Republicans may be going into the vote with optimism now. Let's watch. This is one of those challenges where once you've sort of broken the egg, it's hard to get the shell back together. But Mike is popular uh, on people in the center right and uh, both wings of our party. So I think uh, he's got a very, very good chance. He has the support of the former speaker, Kevin McCarthy, and of uh, Jim Jordan. So that's a big start. Congressman, what's your take on it? Uh, we're at we're, we're a, a sweet spot. A uh, sweet you know, spot? We, we, we are. Uh, mm. it's, all, it's all about unity. And, and I'll tell you, Harris, the one time I failed in my entire career of unity is when I, we won Super Bowl 15. All the guys could care less about who got the credit. We, we started this process months ago, transactionally, people coming aboard based on what they can get out of it. We're now based on the fact that we want to focus on American people. Mike is the right person for the right time. And we'll come out this, uh, this process more unified than ever before. Watch this Congress moving forward. We might be forgotten as individuals, but this Congress will be known for what we've done to pull everything together and get the American people back to work and getting faith in institutions again. And I'm very, very excited about Mike, what he's going to do, and the party, our conference, so, what we're doing right now. Just real quickly, what will be the first thing that you'll seek to do? Once you're all we're unified, going, you have a House uh, Speaker. A resolution to support Israel, the very first, very first act. And then we'll start looking at our appropriations. But our first act is to make sure that America and Israel and the rest of the world knows that this Congress is about the safety of our friends and, and, and making sure we back them every way we can uh, to, 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 to show how much we care for them and how much we are on, this, on, the, same, on the same page. Well, just a, a request from probably millions of Americans, including this one, Deal with the border because because we potentially have some more killers coming across it. I, I know it's a struggle for our border patrol, but they're doing a great job so far. Congressman, thank you very much. Good to have thank you in you. focus. Thank you, Harris.